the television watches football, they'd probably be a little skeptical about Hugh Jackson getting an NFL head coaching job in yeah. the near future. Yeah. He went 3 36 and 1 in the three years with the Browns. Yeah. And then the Browns went 5 and 3 with the same team that he had after he was fired. Yes. He also has the second worst winning percentage in NFL history with uh, coaches with at least 40 games. But Marvin Lewis, who was recently fired from Cincinnati, thinks you could make his coaching return as early as next season. Here's why. More than qualified. Um, I think he's been in a couple of difficult situations. And, uh, you know, and, and that's tough. And, and it hasn't broke his way. But I think he's an excellent football coach. He's a great motivator. And, uh, uh, you know, he's detailed. And, and so I think he, you know, he deserves an opportunity, if not here, somewhere else. Okay, this is what I've been told today. <laughs> this is what I've been told by somebody I trust. The Bengals want to hire Hugh Jackson, but the owner is concerned about the f- feedback from fans and the media. As he should be. But what I am told by somebody I trust, the Cincinnati Bengals want to hire Hugh Jackson. They just don't like the pushback they're going to get. Look, it doesn't matter to me really who the, the Cincinnati Bengals hire as their head coach. Because uh, they ain't beating Baker Mayfield they're, anyway. They're not beating Baker Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I look... I, I like Marvin Lewis. I get moving on from Marvin Lewis. Yeah. He had more than enough time yeah. to, you know, do what he needed to do there. Three thirty-six and one it's not great. is a very bad coaching record. That's not great. Now, I get it. Cleveland's been very dysfunctional. Yeah. And according to Hugh Jackson, yeah. he was he was overruled on picking some pretty talented players yeah. at a quarterback position, which they've had, I don't know, 60 in the last 10 years. Isn't this the interesting story, though? So if Hugh Jackson gets this job, who just taunted Hugh Jackson? Oh, a team he plays twice a year. I'm going to tell you, Baker Mayfield, be very careful who you taunt in this league. Oh, because my. Hugh Jackson's going to get that job. And for he's four gonna years, revenge. and he's going to tell his defensive players, yeah, you hit a little late. It happens. Oh, I mean, look, I, I, I don't. Well, it is the Bengals, so I, that, that's yeah, kind of that's, Vontez Perfect. That's that's been their their reputation. Look, I, I don't know. I don't. I, I, I think Hugh Jackson's a nice guy. Yeah. I, I just don't. I don't get it. Yeah. That's. I mean, there's. That's that, that's bad. I don't think he shouldn't get another job. I'm just saying, maybe that's not the best position for him. That's all I'm saying. Speaking of kind of interesting situations, John Elway is now on the hunt for his fourth head coach yeah. of his eight-year tenure. Yeah. They fired Vance Joseph yesterday after the team completed a 6-10 and 10 season. Yeah. They are now 20-28 and 28 since Super Bowl 50. Does and they haven't, haven't finished better than third in the AFC West since then. And that's their first set of back-to-back losing seasons since 71-72. This is a great organization. This is the Steelers with a mountain range. This is a great organization. Chris Harris thinks a change is long overdue. We just haven't evolved here. I think after the Super Bowl, we kind of just kind of got stagnant. We haven't evolved. So we got to figure out how do we can evolve on offense, defense, special teams, everything. Uh, get better as players. Uh, but we have to evolve with the times that the NFL we're behind right now. I kind of like that. That's pretty smart. Here's the thing, though. They haven't evolved. They've been a little stagnant. Who is making the decisions? Yeah, isn't it Elway? I know it's hard to fire a legend, though. <laughs> it's, I mean, listen, ye- for years and years, the Denver Broncos chased the Elway ghost. Now John Elway's chasing his own ghost. He's trying to find the next John Elway. It's an interesting situation because, yeah, you can't move on from John Elway. You, that's that's could the you decision f- you made. That's it. Could you fire Peyton Manning if he was ever the Colts GM? You can't do it. You can't <laughs> I mean, do it. Come but on. Look, at, look at some of the decisions that have been made there. And he's and, smart. He's a Stanford he- guy. He's just, how about this? It's hard to find the right coach. It's hard. Joy, there's eight openings. It Who the hell's out there? It can't always be the coach's fault. Uh, I'm not yours. That's a good point. And not when you give them Case Keenum, Paxton Lynch, Trevor Simeon, and Brock <sighs> Osweiler. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that's painful. I mean, let's keep it real. <laughs> this is what's happening. These are facts. And what did Dave Wonstead say yesterday? When you build your team, you got to at first win your division. Who's in their division? I know. Mahomes, Derek Carr, Phillip Rivers. I mean, good luck. <laughs> I know. They have the fourth best quarterback in the division. They got to get this quarterback. Where does it even start? The, the, like, are they in a rebuild now? Kind of. Well, they have two good pass rushers. That's not bad. 
That's their thing now. They got two great, Bradley Chubb's great, It's Von one Mother. of those situations where yeah. everyone's kind of afraid to say the thing that's really actually happening there. Yeah. Okay, oh, just, I mean, I think, I feel like I just said it. No, th- but I, I, I really believe the key in this whole thing is if they could play with leads with those pass rushers, they'd be good. They got to get the quarterback figured out. So I'll just say this. Do not be shocked if the Denver Broncos don't sell the farm to move to number one and get Ohio State's quarterback who plays in three and a half hours from now. Dwayne Haskins? Yep. I think he's going to be the number one pick. If he if he's great in the Rose Bowl today, that kid in his last three games had 17 touchdowns, throwing, running, no interceptions. If he carves up Washington today, do I don't want to hear that Dwayne Haskins is the 19th pick in the draft. My butt. He's going number one if he tears up Washington in three hours. No, well, just became a very and important Denver's game. Denver's going to go after him. So finally, the big story today is Antonio Brown. Yeah. Uh, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reported that he basically skipped out on practice, oh, prompting the team to fabricate an injury to report as a cover for his absence. And they showed up on Sunday planning on playing, got shut down. And now it seems like they're at a point where they have to make a decision on whether to trade him or not. Yeah. And this morning, an update on this, Ben Roethlisberger said that he finds a reaction to the story baffling and he downplayed his confrontation with Antonio Brown. The issue is they are kind of stuck with him because if they move on, they're going to take a massive cap hit. They'd have to carry $21 million in dead money if they cut or trade him. They could release him in March with a post-June 1st designation that would be $7 million against the cap this year and $14 million against the cap next year, but that's still, why don't it's get, still colossal. Why don't you just sit down as grown-ups and figure this crap out? Well, I mean, like, let's, let's, not, let's not get rid of Antonio Brown. Let's demand that a 30-year-old grown-up, you sit down and go, okay, let's yell at me. I'll be a therapist. Yell at me. Scream at me. Let's get. Let's clear the table. I'm not getting rid of Antonio Brown. I, I mean, I, don't, no I really way. don't even think that you can. Yeah, you're gonna, you're a, going you to, shouldn't. B, it's ridiculous. You're going to lock yourself up for years at a position that you that this has is, become desperately this, important. This is what you get with wide receivers. Cuckoo. Egos. I don't know. I mean, Antonio Brown has a reputation for being a very hard worker. Yes. But so that's never been in question. I, it's just. I think it's. I think there's a lot of things in play. There's a lot of egos in play. There's an yeah. environment in Pittsburgh where yeah. it's gotten out of control. Yeah. I don't know what you do. Uh, this is a perfect segue to our guest, Joy, with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by.